Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. I hope all of you are doing well. We love you. We are praying for so many of you. Well, today, brethren, is <laughs> Zikhail <laughs> President's Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> never mind. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 1. Millions and billions and trillions of years ago, the first day, we are going to be looking at the first five verses in the book of Genesis today. We're going to have some expository here, and um, my best friend, uh, our brother, uh, helped me with structuring this video. Um, this video was originally intended to be just a refutation, refuting the nonsensical gap theory. What is the gap theory? The gap theory is the uh, theory that there are gaps of time within scripture here, especially within the first chapter of, uh, of Genesis, that there are gaps of time which can be allotted for millions and billions and trillions of years ago. Uh, basically, the gap theory, in a nutshell, is yea hath God said. I've seen many um, things about the gap theory. I've been looking into it. Um, there, are, there are those who bring up like, well, what about before Genesis 1-1? we got to remember, God is not bound by our time, okay? Because it's uh, in the scripture in, uh, uh, what is it, Second Peter, um, where the, uh, a thousand years are a day to our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Um, he lives outside of our time. Time does not exist to our Lord, okay? But there are those who bring up the thing about, well, what about before Genesis 1-1? There's a, that gap of millions and millions. Uh, well, that right away doesn't work because this is the account of the beginning of the creation of the earth. Okay? So what was before the creation of the earth really doesn't make that much of a difference. I mean, that's whatever. Okay? Then there are those who like to make the argument about, well, a day could mean a thousand or a million years. I mean, how do we know what a day really is? I've, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've been looking up in, uh, in this. And then there are some of these which are Bollingerites who will go to verse 2 and pick out the most infinitesimal thing like was, the word was and void, and then try to twist that into uh, uh, saying like the, the earth wasn't created by violence or something like that, or that the earth uh, is actually millions and billions and trillions of years old. All nonsense. You know what is a common factor that I have found with what I've looked into about these people who support a gap theory? They all, that I've looked at, they all like to go to the Hebrew and argue and strive about words. Yeah, they, they, the ones that I've looked into, they all like to go to the Hebrew. Well, the Hebrew word is this, and it's, it's yea hath God said. Okay? It's exactly what it is. Yea hath God said. <laughs> and also, a few that I've looked into, they also like to go to the book of Enoch. Look, 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 okay? The book of Enoch is an interesting, entertaining read. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is not scripture. Okay? The book of Enoch is not scripture. The book of Enoch is not mentioned in scripture. It says, and Enoch prophesied of these things. The book of Enoch is not mentioned in scripture. Okay? The book of Enoch is not scripture. It's interesting and amusing it is not scripture 
Okay. Uh, also, some of these people who are who support the gap theory, like I said, will go to the Book of Enoch. Warning, <laughs> warning. But like I said, that was originally the what was intended for this video. But going through these first five verses, it, it's a little bit more deeper than that. Okay. So, with that out of the way, let us begin. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the things that we are going to be looking at today, okay? It's very important. So, let us begin. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read the first five verses the first day, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. I've spoke to you about this before. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Besides, you know, open your eyes, okay? Don't be a smart Alex. <laughs> but uh, yes, what's the first thing you do in the morning? Hmm? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. What do you? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Hmm? But in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. So right away, the very first verse of scripture tells you that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The beginning of what? The beginning of the heaven and the earth. Now, did, is he talking about the heaven where he sits? No. Remember, there are three heavens, okay? There's the sky, there's the firmament, and then there is where God sits, okay? Okay. That's the, the three heavens, okay? If I can remember, put the three heavens video in the description box, okay? So what heaven is he talking about? Obviously, uh, the sky, okay? The firmament was already there, and where God is already uh, where he is, he didn't create that, but the heaven and the earth, okay? Talking about this stuff, okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. You're going to notice that we're going to be going to the book of John here a few times, as well as Isaiah. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. Note the capital W, and we're going to be touching on that here in a little bit. But note the capital W, okay? There are seven times, and we're going to look at all of these today. There are seven times within Scripture where the capital W word appears. Every single time that appears, we're going to look at it. It is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Meaning, number one, that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay, But in being God the Father, Jesus Christ created the heaven and the earth. See, one God comprised the spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He created the heaven and the earth. Okay? And it says, in him was life, and the light, and the life was the light of men. I've talked about this with you before. If you have ever seen a dead person's eyes before, you know how if you look, I mean, you look in like, uh, you look in your pet's eyes, or your own eyes, you can see that there is light, like, hello, someone's on, uh, in your eyes. But when you look into the eyes of someone who is dead, the light that is in the eyes is not there, meaning... Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath given you life. Okay? So, Jesus Christ created the heaven and the earth. 
because he is the Father, okay? He has also given you life, all right? He has also given you life. Go to Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, uh, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, the beginning of what? The creation of the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 20. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Who is this talking about? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross for what? To make atonement for sin, okay? You can only receive that atonement if you come to him on his terms, okay? We've talked about that at many times at length before, okay? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, okay? The image of the invisible God, spirit, soul, and body, okay? The image. It doesn't mean that he is a carbon copy lookalike of God the Father because what is the Godhead? Spirit, the Holy Ghost, God, the Father, the soul, and the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And these three are one. Also have a video uh, talking about uh, the image of God or the image of man. I'll put it in the description box for you. We go through that as well, okay? But who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Firstborn, okay? That means he's first. He is the creator, okay? He is the firstborn of every creature. He is the firstborn, meaning he's the one who created everything, okay? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And because and hold your place right there really quick. This is not part of the notes, but uh, Revelation... Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, verse four, uh, Revelation 4, verse 11. Okay, let's read that again. Verse 16 in Colossians chapter 1. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. And yes, that means you. All things were created by him and for him. Revelation 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. Why did God create me? Why did God create every, anything? Here's your answer. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Why did God create anything? Because he felt like it, because he wanted to. That's not being a smart Alex, okay? That isn't. That's what the scripture says. He wanted to. <laughs> and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Why did God create anything? Why did God create you? Because you felt like it. You're being a smart... No, that's what the scripture says. Okay? Remember that. Verse 17 in Colossians chapter 1. And he is before all things... And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, his body that is here on earth, which is what? The church. Not a building, not Roman Catholicism, but those of the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay? Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. That in all things, in all things, he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Okay? All fullness. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the soul, God the Father, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Okay? That's the Godhead. Okay? And having made peace through the blood of his cross. 
by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Okay? So, clearly, with these verses alone, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? So, right away, when you read verse 1 in Genesis 1, okay? It tells you that God created everything. And who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the one who created everything. Okay? But now, let's go to the Torah. Exodus chapter 20, just one verse, okay? Just one verse, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Come on, fingers, work with me. Exodus chapter 20, verse, just one verse, verse 11. For in six days, one, two, three, four, five, six. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, the Shabbat, Sabbath, Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Six days. Okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll finish on this. What, what, is the, um, what is a day according to Scripture? Okay? That, that is one of the most ridiculous. And they go to, uh, what is it? Um, Second Peter. Second Peter. And they go to, it's like, well, a day is a thousand years unto our Lord. So in Scripture, the first and second and third day, that could be a thousand years. So in the creation itself, it's already six thousand years. Like, shut up. Just shut up with that. Yea, hath God said. Go to Harry the Hebrew and also to the book of Enoch. Just shut up. Go away. Go away. Nonsense, man. Nonsense. Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Verses 1 on to verse 6. And this is the, uh, this is the psalm that uh, of all of them, they can all be sung if you wanted to. But this is the one that gives clear evidence that at least Psalm 136, I believe, was meant to be done in song. Actually, ah, singing, because of the way it's formatted, the way it's created, okay? Let's look at this. Psalm 136, verses 1 on to verse 6. And, and I've heard Psalm 136 done in song. I can't find the video for it, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, anyway, beg your pardon. Psalm 136, verses 1 on to verse 6. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, little g, for his mercy endureth forever. You might be, uh, right away, you might be saying, well, there are other gods. Remember, ye are gods, okay? What is it to be as gods? It is to be knowing what is good and evil, judging what is good and evil, okay? If I can remember, I'll put that in the video description as well, too. One second. Okay, sorry, wrote that down, so I won't forget, <laughs> okay? All right. But yes, yeah, so about verse 2, Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Uh, we, we talked about that in a video uh, Ye are gods. Um, I'll leave that in the description box for you, okay? Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. By wisdom hmm. made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. Hmm. So, verse 5. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. Okay? Verse 6. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. Hmm. Yeah. God clearly, clearly, God clearly. And I mean, it, it says so right there, here in the verse, first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven, excuse me, and the earth. Okay? And who is God? 
God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? He created the heaven and the earth. You want to deny that, you're calling God a liar. Because what we're looking at thus far is proving unto you what Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says. That God, in fact, created the heaven and the earth. Okay? Go to Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Okay? Isaiah chapter 44, we want verses 6 on to verse 8. Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 on to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, hmm, I am the first and the last. And beside me there is no God. You know how our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation refers to himself? I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. I am, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. <laughs> so, you know how we just looked about how he is God of gods. Okay, remember? You know, ye shall be as gods, knowing Good and evil, okay? Not that you are a creator or anything. But no, 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 no. There is only one God. There is only one God who is made up of a spirit, a soul, and a body, okay? One God, all right? Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order before me, since I appointed the ancient people. Now, that is referring ancient people, referring on to like Adam and Eve, those before the flood and whatnot. So you got these, these nitwit guys, uh, these um, gap theory guys. It's like, well, see, there must have been an earth before Genesis 1.1. Uh, there must have been another earth age. <laughs> See, the ancient people. No, 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 no. The ancient people. He's talking about before the flood. He's talking about the ancient people. In fact, the ancient people. Not that as if there were cities and people before Genesis 1-1. Okay? That's nonsense. No, when it says, I appointed the, since I appointed the ancient people, Okay? Okay? Talking about the older people, number one, but also those in the flood, uh, before the flood, and those, that line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? And who as I shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them shew unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. <laughs> is, there, is there another God beside our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father? <laughs> no. No. He says right there, ah. Uh, <laughs> like, what? I know, I know not any. <laughs> and uh, incidentally, ye are even my witnesses. We today, as the church of the living God, we have the witness, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit within ourselves today. It ain't the Jehos. <laughs> okay? And interestingly enough, it was Mr. Charles Taze Russell who came to this verse out of the Revised Standard Version, he they, the Jehos at the very first, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Jehos at the very first did use primarily the Authorized Version. But when Westcott and Hort brought about the Revised Standard Version, oh, oh yeah, yeah, interesting. So people, in order, going on to the gap theory thing, people, again, who want to try to squeeze in Millions and billions and trillions of years ago. 
they, res they resort to going to the Hebrew. All of them that I've looked at, looked into have done that very thing. They do. Crazy. Okay? I haven't looked into it. There's surprisingly quite a few people out there who are proponents for this gap theory. Quite a few. Quite a few. It's shocking. Shocking, actually. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 18 and 19. For thus sat the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. <laughs> he hath established it. He created it not in vain. Why? Because he wanted to. He formed it to be inhabited. Why? Because he wanted to. Okay? I am the Lord. And there is none else. I am the Lord and there is none else. Okay? You, you're not going to get away from it. Okay? God our Father who is our Lord Jesus Christ. God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? The Bibles will put the heavens. When scripture says the heaven. Okay? Okay? Keep that in mind. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? Absolutely. Verse 2. Okay. And the earth was without form and void. Now, uh, as some, some of you know this, um, because some of you have who watched that heretic devil um, at Shepherd's Chapel, um, Arnold Murray. Oh, wow. He, in like fashion said the Hebrew word for the word was. And then he sounds like a, he does or something. <laughs> Absolutely foolish. Okay. But that guy in this verse makes a big deal about the word was and void and goes to the Hebrew. If someone has to go onto the Hebrew to prove something that is not already readily slammed in your face known through the scripture, beware of such a one. Because I'm going to tell you, it is most likely that they are not speaking for our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? They are not. Okay? But, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the capital S, Spirit of God, moved. Upon the face of the waters moved. Beg your pardon. Now we're, we're going to break this uh, verse up into two pieces, okay? We're going to deal with first, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. We're going to deal with that first, and then we're going to deal with, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, very quickly, what do we see here thus far? In verse 1, in the beginning, God, okay? In verse 2, and the Spirit of God. Okay? But, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. You know, you got people out there who say, well, the earth was millions and millions of years old, and look at the rings and or something in the trees or, or some kind of nonsense. No, all that's all this stuff that we see was created quickly, rapidly. Why? Because of a flood. Okay? Because of a flood. All right. But you got these people who want you to believe, you know, and a uh, fossil eye. Well, what about fossils? Well, the earth, which was destroyed by a flood uh, about 6,000 years ago, probably 7,000 years ago by now, but it's very young. Uh, you know, the, the mountains were covered. How many cubits upward, okay? The mountains, the biggest mountains at that time, okay? Because remember, all this that we see nowadays was formed by the flood, okay? And the pressure of things, you know, being, uh, you know, fossilized in rock, Okay, yeah, the earth is not millions, billions, and trillions of years old, people. Okay, God has shown you plainly. But what, let's need to deal with this. Romans chapter 1, verses 20, on to verse 25. 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. These people who say that we evolved from sniveling snot out of the water and that our great uh, uncle is a monkey. <laughs> okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. The complexity of a leaf, okay? The cycles of seasons, okay? How the bones grow in the womb, okay? The complexity of the eye of a man, okay? These things did not evolve over millions and billions and trillions of years ago. No, no. They come from a complex design by what they, they the phrase is, intelligent creator, intelligent design, God our Father, okay? Evolution cannot explain the eye of a man, the retina, how it focuses and whatnot and stuff like that, okay? Evolution cannot explain our immune systems and stuff like that. And it says here, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. His eternal power and Godhead. Godhead is what? Godhead is what? The spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost, the Father, the Word. All right? That is the Godhead. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. And we have a body. So that they are without excuse. Look at yourself. <laughs> And be careful that the wood, you know, the mirror doesn't break when you're looking at it like it does for me. Okay. But look at your own self. Okay. You yourself, that you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay. Okay. Made in the image of God. That alone gives you proof that we did not evolve from millions, billions, and trillions of years from a sniveling piece of snot that came out of the water that evolved into a monkey and that became us. That is insanity and it's stupid. It's plain stupid. All right? There is no fossil record of a dog ev evolving into a giraffe. Okay? There is no fossil record of a lizard evolving into a bird. Okay? It's, it's, it's fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. This is also being taught at this very day to children in schools. I know. Because I've asked of my grandchildren whenever I get this chance to see them. I know uh, their, their mother and father, they look at me, and, but they, they understand now because especially uh, the ones that live close by us, I've, I've told them, you know, they know about this stuff. So when I ask them, it's like, what are they teaching you in school? And I, I do, I ask them. And the stuff that these kids are being taught in school today, <laughs> wow, wow. But they're still being taught that you, Millions and billions and trillions of years ago, that your great ancestor, you know, your great Aunt Tilly, was a piece of uh, sniveling snot, come out the water, turned into a monkey, and then millions and billions and trillions. <laughs> it's, it takes a special kind of mind to seriously, seriously think that evolution as being taught of how we got here, saying basically, yeah, you know God said, it, it takes a special kind of mind for someone to truly believe that. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It takes a satanic mind. It truly does. It truly does. But you're without excuse. <laughs> you're without excuse. Look at look at your own body. Okay? The complexity of the things in nature. 
That didn't happen over millions and billions and trillions of years ago. It's a fairy tale. Verse 21, because that when they knew, up here only, up here, not here through relationship, okay? Lots of people know God. Yeah, they have a head knowledge. But see, it doesn't go down uh, the 18 inches, you know, from that lump that's uh, three foot above your buttocks, you know, yeah, your brain. It doesn't go down the 18 inches onto the heart, okay? It stays up here. Because that when they knew God, okay, there has to be something out there. Well, who do you think it is? I don't know. I don't know. Let me tell you who it is. I don't want to. Dad, get away from me. Fine, you're without excuse. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, okay, there are those out there who have enough sense. It's like, wait a second. Wait a second. This didn't happen. No, you're right. It didn't happen over millions and billions of trillions of years ago. Jesus Christ, God the Father, he created it. Let me tell you. And then, you know, it's like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. As God what? Creator. And judge. And judge. I have met people who are willing to, it's like, yeah, okay, God created the heaven and the earth. Sure, sure. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But then it's like, okay, well, you know, God has a way to for you to get to know him and to be saved, to escape the wrath that's going to come. But he's got these conditions, you know, kind of. Oh, there's no condition. There, no, no, no. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> There are those out there who are willing to believe that God created this, but they want nothing of him and of his ways that they may be saved. More on this in the future. They call these people very appropriate Christian atheists. Muse is to what? Think. Put an A in front of it. Means what? A muse. Not to think. Amusement parks, blah, okay? Theist, believing in a deity. Atheist, not believing there is a deity. So, Christian atheist. You, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, a, a dear brother of ours, uh, a friend of mine, sent me. I haven't forgotten about that, by the way, brother, okay? That's just the time and place for that. Uh, a brother of mine. A dear friend sent me an article on that, uh, Christian atheism. <laughs> you still want to call yourself Christian, huh? <laughs> Knock yourself out, buddy. <laughs> Knock yourself out. With all the confusion by Mystery Babylon that has been sowed into that word. And words are important. You want to keep using that, huh? Ah, uh, up the dosage there, kid. <laughs> and don't forget to take your Ritalin while you're at it, okay? But because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Again, what does it mean to be foolish? To behave, act, think as if there is no God. And their foolish heart was darkened, <laughs> professing themselves to be wise. They became fools who says, yeah, because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be like the Most High. <laughs> uh, like the phrase I've heard it said before, educated beyond their own intelligence. You go to the Jesuits in their colleges, they teach you all this nonsense, and now you think you know something, but actually you're a fool. <laughs> these, these, these people who go to the uh, cemetery schools to become preachers and pastors to get the thousand dollar or a thousand dollar, yeah, hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall that says the Jesuits say I can do this. They come out fools. They come out fools. They come out with, yea, hath God said, all the, except for the, the ones that are run by, 
Rockman, I eat a boy. Won't get started on that, okay? But most of these, you know, cemetery schools, they all attack what? The scriptures. They all attack the scriptures. I mean, even David Daniels himself will give credence to that, that all they do is attack God's word, the scriptures. Yeah, they profess themselves to be wise. They became fools, and the fool says in his heart, there is no God. You ever try to seriously converse with one of these evolutionist, atheist types people? Like sat down with that. Now, granted, I, I reckon most of the time you run into these people, they're not going to be willing to uh, sit there with you while you go over scripture with them. But in the rare chance that you do, that, that's a special privilege. And if the rare chance that you do, where they are willing to hear your reasonings, let them give them, let them give theirs to you. And then you, as the Church of the Living God, if the Lord, you know, if the Lord is the author of that whole thing, dismantle their arguments. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to do. Especially when you have the Lord living within you. But then again, see. The simple truth of Scripture, these people professing themselves wise, they became fools, they have educated themselves beyond their own intelligence. Why? Because they're trusting in men, man's opinions, man's, the precepts of men, okay? These are people who worship men. And isn't it interesting how man worship bleeds in to what is Christianity? Isn't that something? And that's something, huh? Verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. What is that? Hold your place here. What is that in Psalm 50? Psalm 50? You ought to know this. <laughs> what is that? Psalm 50? Psalm 50... Um where he says, Thou thoughtest that I was uh, altogether uh, not, uh, one such as thyself? Yes. Yes. Uh, Psalm 50, verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. That was Psalm 50, verse 21. And back to Romans chapter 1, verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Worship and serve the creature. And we're going to look at this, you know. Ye shall be as gods. You will be like the Most High. And to birds, the third member of the Satanic Catholic Trinity. And four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Well, if you're going to worship man, man, be, you know, a man worshiper, go ahead, you know. God shall send them strong delusion that they, uh, that they may believe a lie because they, well, instead of butchering that, go to there. Okay? Go to there. You want to know where that is? What I'm talking about, right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that you profess yourselves to be wise. You become fools. What are you actually doing? You're worshiping man. You're worshiping flesh. <laughs> You're worshiping flesh. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that you are your own God, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God 
into a lie. Truth of God into a lie. God created the heaven and the earth in six days. We'll look at what a day, we're gonna, I'm not going to get ahead of us. Uh, we'll look at what a day is defined in scripture. Very much, thank you. Uh, but God created the heaven and the earth in six days. We change the truth of God into a lie. No, there's a gap. A day could be a thousand years because remember, a thousand years is to our Lord a day. So at least the, in the very creation itself in the book of Genesis, you got 6,000 years there. Oh, and what about before Genesis chapter 1, 1? And you got to go to the Hebrew. You have God said. Yea, hath God said. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. This is created. Who created it? God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. These evolutionists. Who created it? Nothing. Over millions and billions and trillions of years ago. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Worshipped and served the creature. Worshipped and served the creature themselves ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil but also worshiped and served the creature more than the creator satan satan is a creature he is a created being he wants to be worshiped like god so these people go to satan's churches bill you know colleges you know and Satan's church is Roman Catholicism, and her army is the Jesuit order. You know, any college, not just the cemetery schools, okay? You think that the Jesuits don't control the regular colleges? You're, you're crazy. You're crazy. Especially here in America. America is a Jesuit nation. End of story. End of story, okay? But, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. See, in worshiping man in your own intellect, you are in fact worshiping Satan, who himself, because of Ezekiel chapter 28, you look that up on your own time, he was taken with his own brightness, his own beauty, all the stones, these precious stones were his covering, okay? He is transformed into an angel of light, and no marvel that his ministers are also transformed into ministers of righteousness. That is beyond the sphere of religion, okay? As you know it, like Christianity, okay? It's beyond that. These evolutionists also is a religion. Evolution is a religion itself. Okay? Just like the poison crown thing. It's a religion. They are all in a hot. They all have one source. And worship and serve the creature. Yea, hath God said. They all have one origin. That worship and serve the creature. Satan. Roman Catholicism and her army. The Jesuit order. Okay? <laughs> It's not funny, but I mean, come on. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 45 again. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. We want verses 9 on to verse 12. Isaiah 45, verses 9 on to verse 12. Remember, professing themselves to be wise... They became fools. You're an atheist. You're an evolutionist. You think that there's a gap theory and that the scriptures say so, but yet you got to go to the Hebrew or the book of Enoch to try to prove it? You're calling God a liar because you're not uh, believing the record that God gave of his son. You go to a Bible, not the scriptures, which take out the words of God. From the oldest and best, Sinaiticus of Anacanus, okay? <laughs> yeah, no one used them because they're junk, okay? And guess who holds them? Guess where they came from? Alexandria, Egypt. Alexandria, Egypt. And who's the custodians of those oldest and best manuscripts? Oh, that'd be Rome. Strange thing, isn't it? Strange thing. 
Strange thing. When you get education into the picture, spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. Okay? It's a strange thing. Strange thing. You know, there are those, my enemies out there, it's like, oh, Brad, you've, you've been, you've been to a, uh, what was the one guy uh, said that he didn't believe me that I was dropped out of high school. <laughs> even some of my enemies is like, yeah, there's, there's no way Brad even finished high school. <laughs> and to my enemies who say that of me, you're right. Thank you at least acknowledging that because I ain't been trained by no Jesuits, see. See, but see, Genesis chapter 2 again, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's what that says. That is to be believed. But see, you go and get yourself educated. What happens? We looked at that in Romans chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 9 on to verse 12. Pick your part, brother. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Look, you atheistic fool out there. Okay? And you so-called Christian. <laughs> yeah, you're a Christian, all right. And you Christian trying to go into Henry the Hebrew and the Book of Enoch for, with your foolish gap theory nonsense. Okay? You are doing this exactly. Woe to him that striveth with his maker. You're striving with your maker. It does, look... It doesn't matter if you want to believe that you are a created being by God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, or not. It doesn't matter. It matters not. He is your creator. And you are going to give an account to him whether you like that or not. Okay? It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't change the facts. Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is the Creator. And you are going to give an account to Him one way or another. It doesn't matter what you think or want. Where are you going to give an account, though? As part of His body, the Church of the Living God, at the judgment seat of Christ? Or at the great white throne of judgment, where you have <laughs> very little chance of getting, getting by? Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. The potsherds of the earth. Let the create creatures strive with the creatures. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou? Or thy work? He hath no hands. Who are you? To say anything to God who created you. Who gave you the gift of today. You have light in your eyes. Okay? You're alive. You're alive because our Lord allowed it. What are you doing with today? Huh? Are you serving Satan? Yourself? Sin the flesh? Oh yeah, we came from millions and billions of years ago. I'm going to go send my kids off to school and blah, 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 blah. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or, the wo or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? <laughs> you know, a lot of us, we, we always get the, this impression that we have every right to be indignant. And, you know, about maybe circumstances in our lives and stuff like that, or people who have wronged us and stuff like that. Well, like Jonah, it's like, I have every right to be angry. You know, because our Lord asked him, I was like, do I sound well to be angry? Jonah's like, I do well to be angry, even unto death. And the Lord's like, you know, let's look at that. Go to Jonah, my man Jonah. Go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4. Not exactly what we spake about yesterday, is it, brother? But hey, <laughs> Jonah chapter 4, verses 9 on verse 11. Someone striving with his maker. Now, granted, Jonah was a saved man. He was just, just you know, had a, he, had a, he had a little uh, ego and pride problem going on. But the striving is what we're looking at this for. God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. 
Then said the Lord, just picture this. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, uh, little boy, come here. Come here. <laughs> thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow. He did it. Which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city wherein are more than six score, six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle? The whole thing about the story of Jonah is the Ninevites, the Nineveh, okay? God said to him, and uh, uh, I have a, we have a video on this too. Uh, if I can remember, I'll put it in the description box as well. Uh, God said, go. Go preach unto, the, uh, unto Nineveh. And of course, Jonah's like, I don't want to do that. And it's like, you're going. <laughs> God's like, you're going. And then Jonah finally went. And because of what Jonah did, they repented and turned themselves from their evil. And our Lord also is like, okay, I'm not going to destroy them. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? But see, Jonah strove with his maker. It's like, Okay, why why are you, why, why? I knew you were a merciful God. These people do, do, deserve to die. Why did you, this? and God's like, Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What beginnest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? You ever read the book of Job? All those questions that God asked Job? Who are you? You, you, you got to remember, we're not even that big, okay, in the sight of God. Some of you really think you are. Some of you really like to put yourselves way up here with it. You're on God's level. Yeah, yeah, I've done this and this and this. Yeah, yeah, some of you do. Some of you do, and it's, it's disgusting. But in reality, okay, this counsel or work be of men, it'll come to naught. But if it be of God, thou canst not overthrow it. Okay? <laughs> We're nothing to God. God doesn't need us. We need him. Okay? Thus, uh, we're in, uh, back in Isaiah chapter 45, by the way. Okay? Verse 11. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. Prosperity people take this verse out of context and say that we are to command the Lord to give us money, wealth, health, cars, women, men, whatever. God have mercy on your wretched soul. God have mercy on your wretched soul. Uh, when he says command me, it's like, Lord, Shoo me thy truth. <laughs> That's what it's a reference to. Shoo me thy truth. Shoo me truth, Lord. Show me, please. Okay? Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. You want to know what's going to happen in the future, by the way? We could talk about it got a book that tells you play by play what's going to happen now does this tell you exactly what you know you're going to go out your door and you're going to watch and it does this tell you that a black cat's going to come across no it doesn't tell you that this tells you what is coming in the future the time of jacob's trouble the mark of the beast the end the, it tells you from the beginning unto the end what's going to happen okay yeah we know the future why because it's written for us in the scriptures so so, okay, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of the things come, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me, okay, of my sons. Who are his sons? The sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel, and we are grafted into that tree. Hence, we are his children as well, okay? Ask me about my sons, about those who are his body, the church of the living God. And uh, what does it say? And concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Uh, ask me about salvation. Ask about how God created the heavens and the, the excuse me. Ask me how God created heaven and earth. 
Okay, go ahead. He says, command ye me. Search the scriptures. Ask him. Believe that he is. Don't be a, a, a double-minded, unstable man. Come to him. It's like, God, Lord, I want to know truth. Show me truth. Show me through the scriptures truth. And then hold on to your hats, boy. That's what he's talking about. All right? Verse 12. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands. God has hands. But, yeah, because God has a body. The word. You twit. The word made flesh. I know that's really hard for some of you little devils out there to get that. I, I understand. I understand. Because you're lost. You're not right in the head. But I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts and all their hosts have I commanded. Okay? Now, go to John chapter 3. Okay? So, you go to John chapter 3. I want us to refresh, though. I'm going to refresh ourselves. Verse 2 in Genesis chapter 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It says what it does, and it does what it says. Okay? God who created it. He formed the earth. He created the earth. Okay? But now, and the Spirit of God moved. Upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moves. Moves. Okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 2. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Not Luke, Brad. John chapter 3, we want... Verses 5 and 8. This thing about the Spirit moving. Moving. Okay? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the capitalist Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, he is not making a reference unto the kingdom of heaven in this context. Why? We'll see. He's talking about the spiritual, the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Yes, kingdom of God can be a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, every single time is what? A reference onto the actual kingdom that's going to be in Jerusalem. Sometime, depending on context, kingdom of God can be referring onto the kingdom of heaven. In this context, it's the spiritual, okay? But, okay, now see, Catholics will come to verse 5 and say, you got to be <laughs> baptized in water. No. No. In the future, a video on Acts 2.38 will be coming, just so you know. Okay? Water baptism is not necessary, necessary for our salvation. Catholic. Okay? That's from Catholicism. Okay? Taking the scriptures out of context. But, what does it say? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water. Born of water. He come out of the water of a sniveling snot. No, no. Water. Remember when they pierced our Lord's side? What came out? Blood and water? Okay. Big pun. What came out? Blood and water? Okay. Water there is denoting being of a natural birth. Because this is talking about two births. One being born, you're born. Okay? You've heard the term, beg, beg your pardon, that women, when they're about to give birth, you're, their water breaks. Okay? Okay? You've heard that term? Yes? Even, even you, beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. There we go. Yes, yeah, even you evolutionist guys and you guys who, who call God a liar. So like, yeah, I've heard the term, your water breaks, okay? Except a man be born of water, naturally born, born, you know, firstborn, a natural birth, okay? Except a man be born of water 
and of the Spirit, capital S, okay? Born of the Spirit, meaning born again. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God, all right? So, it's, he's talking about first a natural birth, and then second, a spiritual birth that comes from him and dwelling in you, that seal until the day of redemption, okay? That which is born of the flesh, and it defines itself, is flesh, water. He's talking about, that's what he's talking about. He, verse 5, he explains in verse 6, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, earthly, okay? And that which is born of the spirit, capital S, is spirit, lowercase s, okay? So, water, natural birth, being born, spirit, born again. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Look at that verse again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. We don't know what the Lord is going to have for us to do today. He doesn't, we don't know those kind of things, okay? We know what our ultimate end is, is to go and to be with the Lord. Absolutely, okay? Absolutely. But see, again, the Spirit moving, the Spirit moving. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Remember Shimon the sorcerer? He goes up to uh, Peter and them and he's like, hey, offer some money. It's like, hey, give me this power so that whoever I lay hands on may receive the Holy Ghost. And what does Peter say? Your money perish with thee. <laughs> because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 4 and 5. Okay. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Okay. You don't, the Lord doesn't come into you by something you do, by you doing step one, step two, step three. No, he seals you when you come unto him according to his terms. Okay, there's nothing you're going to do to be able to manipulate the spirit of God. Like this, this is the very thing that these charismatics teach that, you know, command ye me that as if you are the puppet master playing God as if he's a marionette. That's dangerous. That's, that's very, very dangerous. Okay, but he that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Okay? As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. You don't know. Again, how do the bones form in the womb? Huh? You don't know. You might say, I have all this scientific data, but, you know, that's, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Okay? Birthing children, bringing in children, that's a miracle. Okay? That's a miracle. All right? But see, the spirit moves. The spirit moves. All right? And now also, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. So, in verse 1, in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, okay? And then in verse 2 here, we have, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So, 2. We have God and the Spirit of God, 2, okay? Acts chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, 
as Bar Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod and Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. So the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost <laughs> said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Hmm. Now, some of you wicked Trinitarians, uh, if you don't know about that, that's, that's a different thing. But if you're, you know, a Catholic Trinitarian, you know, um, it's like, well, that's, that's the, uh, that's the third person of the Trinity. No. No, no, there's not even a mention of a person at all, is there? No, no, there isn't. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So the Holy Ghost called these people. Who is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Ghost? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, just one verse, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And the Spirit of God moved across the waters, and the Lord is that Spirit. <laughs> And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Hey, Hacha. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Our liberty is Jesus Christ. Our liberty is Jesus Christ. What do you do with that, hot shot? Hmm. Hmm. And how are you using that liberty? I've said. Back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? So we have in verse 1, in the beginning, God. Verse 2, and the Spirit of God. Okay? Verse 3. And God said, and God said. Oh, well, you can say things without saying things. Shut up. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So, in the beginning, God. Verse 2, the Spirit of God. And God said. God said. If God said something, what does that mean? He's speaking. What is he speaking? He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay. So, you know, like, see this? Okay, that's a light bulb. One of those LED things. Okay. But actual light itself, light itself, not the light bulb, but light itself. And the sun's starting to come out, by the way, up by me. Wow, that's good. <laughs> but light in and of itself was created by God. As darkness in and of itself was created by God. Okay? But, and God said. If God said something, then it says, let there be light, and there was light. God said what? Let there be light. So God audibly spake something. Okay? You know where we're going with this, right? Okay? So, and God said. 
Go back to John chapter 1. Now you, okay, you, yes, you, get yourself a paper, get yourself a pen, write this down, or get your pen, make sure one it's not one that bleeds really bad, if you got a uh, quality scripture like this, and go ahead and circle in your scriptures the verses that we are going to look at, okay? Like I told you. Go to John chapter 1. Seven times within the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Seven times. Capital W word appears within the scripture. You see, and I get it. Okay? I do it a similar, like for example. Um, my brothers. When I refer to my brothers, I always capitalize the B. Okay? Uh, I, I do. It's like my brothers. Uh, it's like, hello, brother, so-and-so. I always capitalize that. Okay? I always do. Okay? Um, you know, dearly, dearly beloved sister. You know, sister, I capitalize that. Brother or sister, I capitalize. Okay? But see, when it comes to capital W word, there are those out there when they're talking about the scriptures, they will use a capital W word when talking about the scriptures. I understand why they why you do that. Showing a sign of respect. I get that. I understand that. But that is not accurate according to scripture. Okay? That is not. Okay? That is not. When talking about the word word. Okay? When talking about the word word. Like I said, same principle I when I refer to my brothers or sisters. Or brethren, you see it in, in, even in the, the description box. I always capitalize it. Why? You know, I'm showing respect unto. And even a brother, it's like, you know, why are you doing that, Brad? Others don't do that. Paul didn't do that. It's like, I know, I, that's just something I do. And he's like, okay, whatever. But see, that's not talking about the word, okay? The scriptures, the word, okay, is meant to be lowercase w. Unless it's at the beginning of a sentence, of course. But when it comes into what is the capital W word in context to scripture, that's very important. That's very important. Words have meaning. Words are important. With every pun intended. John chapter 1. Now get, like I said, get your, get your little pen, mark it in the scriptures, or write these down. Okay? Write these down. All right? And, 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 and you know... It, don't like get out the shotguns and start shooting people when they, you, you, there's someone of the Church of the Living God who's like refers to the scripture with a capital W word. Don't jump down their throat about it. Just like, uh, hey, brother, you know, if anything, it's like, you, you know, there's seven, seven times capital W word is talking about Lord Jesus Christ, you know, when talking about the scriptures, use the lowercase w. Okay? Simple. And if they don't want to do that, it's okay, fine, okay? It's between you and the Lord, okay? But, John chapter 1, verse 1, okay? Now, get, like I said, get, get your pen and paper, okay? Verse 1. In the beginning was the capital W Word. And the capital W Word was with God. And the capital W Word was God. 3, right there. And look at verse 14. Okay, and we're going to read this a little later, but for this point exactly. Verse 14, and the, the word God said, God said, let there be light. God said, forth, and the word, why is this so difficult for you? What is it with you? You're lost, and you're a Catholic. That's what it is. That's why it's so difficult for you. Okay? The Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. Why is that so hard for you? Were you dropped on your head as a baby? Huh? What is it with you? I mean, I know you're lost. I know you're serving the Vatican. But what is it with you? What is it with you, man? Goodness gracious. And the word, fourth, fourth appearance. 
And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Four times. Four capital W words. Okay? Now, First John. Interesting to note that the seven appearances of the capital W word have in common Book of John, First John, and the Book of Revelation. All penned by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through the hand of John the Apostle. That's not to be missed. But, okay, we have for, in John chapter 1, verse 1, three times. John chapter 1, verse 14, the fourth time. Okay, the fifth time. Go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Also, verse 1 again. Verse 1 again. Here's the fifth time. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, we, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the, of the word of life. Who is he talking about? And the word was made flesh. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ. God said the word. <laughs> the word made flesh. Okay? Not the flesh was made into the word. Okay, the other way around, you wicked Catholic. Okay? <laughs> you Catholics. Even you. You Catholics. Uh, but that's the fifth time of the capital W word. Okay? First John 5. 1 John 5, verse 7. The Johannian comma. And the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard, the, uh, what is that, Stern's translation, the non-King James Version has it in there, but it has a little asterisk to cast doubt upon it. But here's the, and this is the one that the Bibles remove because it's not in the oldest and best. Okay? They remove this one. So then, in the Bibles, there's only six times that the capital W word appears. Ain't that interesting? Yeah. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Father, in the beginning, God. Okay? The, the uh, sixth appearance of the capital W word, the word, God said. Okay? The Father, soul of the Godhead, in the beginning, God. The word, God said, the word was made flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And these three are one. They're not each and every single one their own person. Scriptures do not say that. Okay? So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. One God. Okay? That is the sixth appearance of the capital W word. Okay? Right there. That's the, And that one, the Bibles take out. Okay? Go figure. Go figure. And the seventh and final appearance of, w, of the capital W word, Revelation chapter 9... 19, excuse me, Revelation chapter 19, oh, oh, wait, 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 where was that, where was that, sorry about that, in my notes I forgot to put the one in front of the three, 
Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, not 3. And I'm like, look, what? And I'm like, oh, yeah, but what? I forgot to put the one in there. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture, an article of clothing, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Seven. Seven times in the scriptures. Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. Seven times in the scriptures. The capital W word appears. Seven times. Just went through them, okay? First John chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, yeah, First John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 14. Okay, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, and Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Within those seven times, the capital W word appears, okay? So now when you go back to, okay, when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, okay? In the beginning, God created the, created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. There is the Godhead within the first three verses of Scripture. Okay, The Godhead is able to operate of, its own, of his own. Okay? Okay? But they're not individual persons. But big difference. Big difference. You see the Godhead at work right here in the first three verses of Scripture. Okay? God said the Word. He spoke words. The Word was made flesh, people. Okay? I, I know that's really hard for you lost Catholic devils out there to understand that. I get it because you're lost, okay? Someone of the Church of the Living God is like, well, yeah, the Word was made flesh. Yeah, I, I know, but see, you lost infiltrators and you pagan idolaters. You, you can't get that because you're lost. You're lost. You're lost. Plain as day, okay? But see, you see the Godhead right there. Right there. God said. Capital W Word. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. And in him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> okay? I, I, like I said, like I said, I, I know why you guys can't get that because you're lost, okay? But now, okay, we've established that. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. God actually created the actual light that is out there. Light in and of itself was created by God. Boom. We don't, I mean, Edison, you think he didn't? No, no. God created light. God created darkness. Okay? Okay? So, therefore, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, walking their talk, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Because God is watching what we do. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The scripture is truth. And a lost person can speak truth from the scriptures because the scriptures in and of themselves is truth. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
True wisdom, fear of the Lord. True understanding, departing from evil. True knowledge that comes from fear of the Lord. Wisdom is hid unto those who are lost. The gospel, the true gospel is hid by those who are lost. Okay, are hid unto those that are lost. And yeah, they're, the, those who are lost are trying to hide the true gospel actually, aren't they? With their easy believism, their ecumenical love gospel, or their lordship salvation, aren't they? They are trying to hide the gospel, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but see, I mean, and, and, and you look at these people, brethren, online. <laughs> wow, 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 yeah. How much truth is really hid from them? Think about that. Why? Because all they can resort to is attack. That's all they can resort to is an attack. And when they try to expound truth of Scripture, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, does it? Does it? Why? Because you've got someone who is lost trying to put off that they are of the church of the living God, but actually an idolater or an infiltrator, and they just make themselves look like a bluttering idiot. And an idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. Isn't that so? In whom the God of this world, who is the God of this world? Satan. Hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. For we preach not ourselves. Uh, you remember that? Hmm? We're supposed to preach Christ and him crucified? How many of them out there are preaching just to satisfy their own personal agenda? For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. That's who I preach. What about you? And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay? First Peter chapter 2. I told you about this one. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. What are you doing, Brad? Verses 6 on to verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 10. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him, okay, shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even them which stumble at the word. Oh, it can go off on many a direction on that one, can we? Yeah. Being disobedient, whereon, whereunto also they were appointed. Appointed. How are they appointed? Because, number one, they're disobedient, and then they're trying to do things in Scripture and expound Scripture and make points just to justify themselves or their hero. Okay? What happens? Uh, they stumble at the word. Why? Because they are disobedient. Because they are not being obedient. Therefore, they were appointed to stumble at the word. Because if our gospel be hid, it be hid unto those who are lost. God isn't going to reveal deep truth of Scripture to someone who is lost. Are you kidding me? No, they'd have to go to all the commentaries of man and all the seminars of certain, you know, like these, uh, what's that uh, What's that one guy? Uh, I forget what his name is. Um, oh, I forget what his name is. 
must not be important. But they got they got to follow their men around. They got to get all their stuff, you know. And still, the truth is hid from them. Okay. Uh, Skava, Rob Skava. That's who I was thinking of. Okay. That's what I was thinking of. That guy. He kept doing uh, seminars and whatnot. Who incidentally died of COVID. Okay. <laughs> That's who I was thinking of. Okay. But see. God is not going to reveal the deep truths of Scripture to someone who is not his own, okay? And then you had the guys like the late Rob Skava or whatever his name was who would have all these seminars all across America and whatnot and stuff like that, and men would follow him, they would buy his books, and that Johnny Cherucci guy too who, uh, oh boy, he says that the authorized version was written by Bacon. <laughs> that the authorized version is a Masonic thing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. God has showed these guys nothing. The little G God of this world, maybe. But God has not revealed nothing unto these people, brethren. Verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his Marvelous light. And what are we reading to? Oh, we are reading to verse 10. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Why? Through the Jews' unbelief. The gospel has come unto us Gentiles to make them jealousy. Okay? And go now back to John chapter 1. Okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1, John chapter 1, let's pick up now at verse 6 on to verse 14, okay? We already looked at the verse 14, yes, but we're going to look at it in context now. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light, okay? Now, to my knowledge... Capital L light in this context only appears four times in Scripture, and it appears here. And you see the capital L there. That is what? Capital L. He's referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He is the true light, okay? Now, in Genesis, it is not a capital L. We know that. I mean, you can read plain English, can't you? You see, uh, and God saw that, and, and God said... Let there be light, and there was light. Okay, that's not a capital L, obviously. Because why? Why? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? Jesus Christ is not a created being. Okay? He's not. Okay? Martin Richling went to this verse and said that, I, 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 I don't, for, I've never forgotten it. Oh, I'm going to teach you something. I've never taught it. If I come up here, I'm going to give you a hard pill to swallow. Jesus Christ is a created being. That's what Martin Richling said. Okay? Uh, Mr. Den, Denlinger has a really good video about his, about how he demonstrates that Martin Richling even said that. Okay? Yeah, so... But yeah, he, uh, Martin Richling, a Jesuit, called Jesus a creating, created being. No, Jesus is not a created being. He is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? So, he says here in verse 7, there came for, the, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capital L, referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, that all men through him might believe. He, John the Baptist, was not that light, capital L, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true, capital L, light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Meaning, like we've already touched on, you have breath in your body, you're alive, it's because God allowed it. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is God the Father. He even said so much of himself, dear friend. Okay? He has given you life today. That light in your eyes is from him. 
I have seen the eyes of a dead person before. There's no light in the eyes. You know, have you ever put down, pardon, have you ever put down one of your pets? Okay? You know, you look at your pet, it looks like, you know, like for a putty cat. You know, you shine a light, their eyes glow and stuff like that. But when they are dead, there's no glow because there's no light in them. Okay? Same with the person. A person is a spirit's own body. Okay? Same thing. Okay? That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Meaning, <laughs> you're alive today because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, let you be alive. He wanted you to be alive. And that light that is in you, your life is given to you by Jesus Christ. Okay? It doesn't matter if you want to believe that or accept that or not. That is the fact. That's the fact, Jack. Beg your pardon, okay? But that's the fact. Uh, either like it or, woo, learn to love it. Because that's the way it is. It matters very little to what you believe on that alone. Jesus Christ created heaven and the earth. He created everything. You're without excuse. Look at it in the mirror, okay? Look at your own body, okay? Who are you to strive against him? You're an atheist? You're an evolutionist? You're a proponent of this wicked gap theory thing? You're a Bollingerite? You have not said. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. By who? Jesus Christ. The word made flesh. God said. Okay? He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Jews, not mankind. He came unto his own, the Jews. Why? And his own received him not. <laughs> in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, uh, I think it's in uh, chapter 2 or chapter 3. Uh, where he says, if I had sent you on to another people, they surely would have believed you. But since I send you on to my people, the children of Israel, they're not going to hear you. Uh, I forget if that's in Ezekiel 2 or Ezekiel 3. It's in one of those. But see, he came on to his own, the Jews, the Hebrews, that chosen line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? He came on to his own and his own received him not. Okay? But as many as received him, there were some Jews who believed, okay? To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood. You don't save yourself. You don't save yourself because you make a mental decision. Oh, dee -do -dee. oh okay, I'm saved. Do -dee -do -dee -do. Uh, you, you, you know, you're not saved because you're a good person, okay? You're not saved because you're just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm taking this and putting this out of my life. I'm cleaning this. Now, God, give me repentance. Which were born not of blood. See, we're all born, right? Through water, yes. You know, the, the woman's water breaks, okay, people? Very, very simple, okay? We're all born and we all have a natural birth, right? which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. Okay? You know, remember the spirit moves, okay? You cannot dictate to the spirit of God, and what is that spirit, that he is going to save you. He's the one who saves you. You come to him on his conditions. It's that simple. But no. No. You want to get rid of that. You want to save yourself. You shall be as gods. You want to save yourself. I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm not as bad as he is. Oh, so you're a good person. Well, uh, I cleaned up. Look at how clean I've, uh, you know, I've had a changed life. Look at how I've changed my life. Now, come on, God. Give me what's due me. Yeah. Who's the one who does the choosing? And that's not Calvinism, you... Twit! <laughs> it's 
Is God forcing it on you? No. With some of you, it seems like Satan is forcing you, isn't it? Yeah. But no, no, no. Or else you'd be a robot. And some of you are pretty robotic, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah. Which were born not of the not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, thou canst not overthrow it. Uh, and the word <laughs> was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, it, it, I want to touch on this too. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. We want verses 1 on to verse 3. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, okay, to the acknowledgement of of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom Christ, who is the in whom of Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ is hid all the what? Treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Fear of the Lord produces true knowledge. Okay? True knowledge. If our gospel be hid, it be hid to them who are lost. Okay? And it says here, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If the Lord is not in you, you you're going to have to go to a myriad of commentaries. You're going to have to go and buy a whole bunch of CDs, a whole bunch of tapes, stockpile yourself videos, and uh, study Bibles in order to fake it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because why? In him, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You come to him on his terms, and he saves you. The mind of Christ. He is the wisdom of God. Isn't that something? Jesus Christ, the wisdom and knowledge of God? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Jesus Christ is the wisdom and knowledge of God. Hmm. And God said, the word made flesh. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 12 on to verse 32. I wisdom. Dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Uh, do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. And in Christ is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And through wisdom, the fear of the Lord and understanding is to depart from evil, okay? It begins with wisdom, fear of the Lord. Who is the wisdom of God? What is the wisdom of God? Okay? By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. Talking of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And remember, in Scripture, wisdom is comparable unto a beautiful woman. That the beauty of wisdom is beyond anything. 
it is compared unto the beauty of a woman. And unto us man, men, the beauty of a woman is like, wow, right? Nothing can compare to wisdom, okay? When wisdom is compared unto the beauty of a woman, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, surpasses everything. And in Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, okay? All right? That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Oh, like the kingdom of heaven? I will fill their treasuries. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old, okay? Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? Where, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Well, as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore, Hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hmm. 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 Verse 3. God said, the Word made flesh. Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from from the darkness. See, right there now in the fourth verse, we see division. God divides. Truth divides. I came not to send peace, but a sword. To set a man at variance against his father and his mother and stuff like that. Okay? A man's foes will be they of his own house. Yeah? Okay? God is a God who divides. God is a God of separation. God is a God of distinction. You see in Satan and his ministers, let's all come together. It's not going to happen. Even amongst those of the Church of the Living God, we're not all going to get along. We aren't all going to like one another. And quite frankly, we unfortunately are going to doubt so and so and so and so, even if they are, if they are of the church of the living God. We'll find out when we get there, won't we? Tough guy. But and God saw the light that it was good. Now that is not a capital L light, okay? It's actually talking like light. You know, here again. Okay, not Thomas Edison or a light bulb, but light, okay? Light in and of itself was created by God. I form the light. I create darkness, okay? Isaiah chapter 53. But see, right here, and God divided the light from the darkness. Now, on verse 4 here, and God saw the light, that it was good. That is not a capital L light, okay? But the light of men. Is Jesus Christ okay Isaiah chapter 53 Isaiah chapter 53 he saw the light that it was good and the light of all men that you know Jesus Christ gave you life he is the true light that lighteneth the whole world he is the true light okay Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 and 12 on to verse 12 Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Okay? God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Himself. Oh, all the Bibles mess that one up. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. And he saw that the light was good. And this is talking about, this is obviously uh, one that is hated amongst the Jews and their synagogues. Uh, Isaiah 53, it is the forbidden chapter, okay? Because this is talking about their king, their God, the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father. Their God, their Mashiach, okay? Therefore, oh wait, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge and in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge okay by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, he came unto his own, okay? And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Hmm. And now Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Okay? Verses 18 on to verse 23. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 18 on to verse 23. Hear ye deaf, and look, ye blind, that ye may see. Who are blind but people who are in darkness? Hmm? God saw the light, and he saw that it was good, okay? Yes? And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. Yes! God, you know, the sun to rule by day, and the moon to rule by night. He made the stars also, okay? Yes, he did. He divided the light and the darkness. Okay? But what we are why we are looking at that, and I think you already figured this out, okay? There are those out there who say they can see that they have light, but they're blind because they're in darkness. Why? Because they are following the little G God of this world. Verse 18 in Isaiah chapter 42. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You mean your servant's blind? What are you talking about? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? What, he can't hear? What? What? Wait a minute. What? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Look at verse 20. Seen many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he, you, heareth not. Who, who okay, the Lord's servant, okay? This, this is another reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? What, what was, geez, was our Lord blind, deaf, uh, what, what, not perfect? No, 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 of course, he, of course not, no, of course not. What's this talking about? Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Hmm. Hmm. And he says in verse 18, Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind that ye may see. Huh? And then verse 20, Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Okay? Then in verse 21, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Who? The one he's talking about in verse 19. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he magnified the law. Why? Because he's God. He was the only one who could keep the law perfectly. See? Okay? But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hidden in prison houses. Hidden prison houses, taken captive by Satan, snared by him at his will, okay? They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? 
Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Okay. Who, who would say that of God's messenger? Well, who would say that? Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. There are those out there who say, we have eyes to see, but they're blind. Church of Laodicea, we have many things, we have need of nothing, but thou art miserable, blind, and naked. There are many people out there who say they can see, having their eyes open, right? But they're in darkness, they're blind. Hmm. John chapter 7, verse 15, one verse, one verse. And now, okay, let's read verse 14 and 15, okay? Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, went to the temple, his place, that was his, okay? And taught. And the Jews, the Pharisees and stuff like that, marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Hmm. Hmm. So someone who says that they have eyes to see but yet are blind, they are the ones who will say of God's messenger, of God's servant, as we have seen here in Ezekiel, and I close the scriptures to that, here in Ezekiel chapter, well, well, Isaiah uh, chapter 42, okay? Here in uh, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 19, Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant? Hmm. Really? Who would say that? Oh, those who say they have eyes to see, but they don't see. Like these guys. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? And then also, you go to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verses 39 on to verse 41. Okay? And Jesus said, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. Isaiah chapter 42, okay? Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. Yeah, and they're full of dead men's bones. They are for prey, and none delivereth. For a spoil, and none saith restore. Look at verse 20. Seen many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Their ears are open. They could hear, but they didn't hear. And Jesus says here in verse 39, in John chapter 9, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the world, into this world, that they which see, that, that they which see not might see. And they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees, which were, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? What? We know letters. We have the scholars. We have the buildings, okay? We have the careers. We're the professionals. We, you know, are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Satan said unto Eve, um, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, go against what God has said, then your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Aren't you so glad that you got eyes to see, huh, you lost devils? Yeah. Having eyes, do you see not? Having ears, hear you not? Apparently, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 on to verse 8. Okay? Isaiah 45, verses 5 on to verse 8. Okay? He saw the light, and the light was good, and he divided the light from darkness, okay? That God created light and darkness, okay? He's the one who divided the day for us, okay? 
extinguishing, extinguishing from light and darkness. Okay? God did that. Okay? But light and darkness. Light and darkness. Isaiah 45, verses 5 on to verse 8. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. This is, of course, the Cyrus thing. Okay? Which some of these, my poor, sad countrymen, still to this day. Yeah, and, and, and Donald Trump is going to make a, an appearance just like Napoleon. Just like Napoleon. You watch. You watch. It's going to be just like the Jesuits did with Napoleon, with Donald Trump. You watch. You watch. You watch. You watch. Okay? But, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. And then, talking about what we have talking about, you lost people, you evolutionists, you atheists, who want to believe that the earth is millions and billions and trillions of years old, and you can go to the Bible and the Hebrew and your commentaries. It's like, well, actually, uh, the earth is actually millions and billions of years old, and we as Christians need to start saying such. Hey, shut up. Get saved. Get saved. Okay? You wicked devil. Okay? I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Context. He's talking about Cyrus. To instruct us in a little righteousness. Okay? You, you, you devil. You wicked lost person. You have light in your eyes. You're alive. You have breath today. You have today that is given to you of the Lord. He has girded thee, though thou hast not known him. Okay, You might know of him, you know, because of something in your head. You don't know him through a relationship. Why? Because you didn't come to him on his terms. Broken of yourself. See? Okay? You're alive today. It doesn't matter who you are. My worst enemy you're alive today because God has allowed it to give you mercy to come to repentance that you might be saved. Now, some of you, if you're too far gone, you ain't going to get saved. You've already made your choice. Uh, even you youngsters who are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, you ain't going to get... Well, maybe maybe for some of you, maybe, I don't know, you, that's going to be a hellacious time. We're not going to be there, but you are, okay? <laughs> okay? But uh, some of them are not going to repent. But, see... He has given you today. And you don't know him. You don't know him. Neither were they thankful. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. That includes not you either. Okay, That includes you. You're not God. Even though you're an atheist you, you say, I don't believe in God. Yes, you do. The one that you're looking at in the mirror. Don't get, get over yourself. <laughs> I've, I've actually said that to atheists before. Yeah, it gets their attention. Yeah, you know, and a, a, a brother once said to me, it's like, no, Brad, that might not be the best thing to say to an atheist. Well, you know, maybe not, but it sure gets their attention. It sure gets their attention. And I am still to this day in contact with the atheist who I said that to. He still ain't saved. Thank your pardon. Thank your pardon. He still ain't saved, but um, you're watching. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't got that much time left, my friend. You know who you are. You know who you are. You ain't got that much time left. You better get it done, buddy. <laughs> Yes, I form the light, verse 7, and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation. And let the righteous spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Yes. Looking at verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And you read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Nothing happens without our God say so. Okay? God will either do it or allow it. 
okay? We, we talked about this in the Done or Allowed video, okay? Okay, God don't, doesn't do evil himself, but he allows it, okay? Hence, with Saul, okay? It says that God sent an evil spirit upon Saul, okay? No, God allowed it, but yet in him allowing it, he's like, okay, go ahead and do it. God allowed it to happen, okay? Nothing gets by God, okay? Nothing gets by God, okay? Done or allowed. That's the one video. I'm writing that down to remember to put that in the description box as well, okay? But now go to Matthew chapter 25. This thing about dividing, okay? This thing about dividing. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verses 31 on to verse 33. The word of God divides. Truth divides. There are those who stand for absolute truth and those who do not. Those are, there are those who stand for the scriptures and those who stand for the traditions of men and their heroes or whatever. Okay? Truth divides. God is a God who divides. The division of God. Okay? Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 on to verse 33. And of course, Matthew chapter 25, talking about the kingdom of heaven. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, that's us, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory in Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate the one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep, who hear his voice, from the goats. God divides from his sheep and the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, goats on his left okay and ultimately ultimately second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 second not second thessalonians second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure and there is only one foundation that anyone can lay and that is what jesus christ not Pope Peter. Okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth those who are, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He sure does. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. God knows who are his. You say you are, huh? I doubt it. I doubt it. Hmm? There are those I trust. There are those I trust, yes. And there are a lot out there who I do not trust. There are those out there I think are idolaters. Or a, they're either a pagan idolater or an infiltrator. And remember, brethren, these are the last days. What are we warned about? <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. <laughs> For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They went out from us, but they were not all of us, but they were manifest that they went out that they might be manifest, excuse me, that they were not all of us. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord knoweth those who are his. Absolutely he does. And God saw the light, that it was good. He, and we read, he, he creates light and forms of darkness, okay? Okay, actual light. But while we looked at that, and God divided the light from the darkness. The light being those, the sheep. Darkness being those, the goats. You figured that out already. Okay. Verse 5. And here, here's one that I saw was really contested. Okay. 
And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Well, the day to the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years. Where, where is that? Where is that again? That's in what? That's in, uh, that's uh, 2 Peter, right? Right, 2 Peter, uh, what is that, chapter 3? 2 Peter, chapter 3, uh, yeah, verse 8. <laughs> Uh, well, let's, well, let's read uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 8. And very appropriate. <laughs> Knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Yeah. And saying, where's the promise of his coming? Well, it's always been like this. You're saying there's, uh, there's going to be a redemption of the purchased possession? Where is it? We're still here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Willingly don't know better. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to just go on as they were going on, as if nothing happened. They want their cake and eat it too. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have your cake and eat it too. All things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for you, but all things edify not. Go ahead, knock yourself out, buddy. Some of you, please, literally do. Go knock your head against the wall. Maybe they'll knock some sense into some of you. Okay? For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Okay? So... By the word of God, the scriptures, the heavens were of old, okay? And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that was then, that, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now that devil from uh, uh, Shepherd's Chapel, that Murray guy, he said with this verse, get Noah's flood out of your mind. No, that's what he's that's what he's referring to. That's what he's referring to. Noah's flood. Okay? See, that guy from Shepherd's Chapel, he was playing it on to about the time before, okay, the age before this earth which was talked about in Genesis chapter one. Okay? That's what he the guy's a heretic. Stay away from him. Okay? But no, this is talking about the flood of Noah. But the heavens and the earth, which are now after the flood, okay, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Because he said he would not destroy the earth by a flood as he had done you know, with Noah's flood, okay? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, see, in Genesis there, verse 5, a day is a thousand years. No! God does not, God is not bound by time. Okay? <coughs> God is not, there's no God before him. Okay? There's only one God. He knows not, there's no other God but him. Okay? He lives out of our construct of time. He's not bound by our time, okay? That's what that means, okay? Okay, and besides, we're going to look at the Captain Obvious verse here in a little bit that shows us what a day actually is, okay? N no, what verse 8 is talking about is God is outside of our time. He's not bound by our time. A thousand years is to a day to him. What's time to God? He's eternal. I am. Okay? Time doesn't mean anything to him. Okay? Because he's outside of our time. Okay? Time to you. We Our time is running out. Okay? Okay? And prove that to you. Okay? Keep reading. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, 
but that all should come to belief. Repentance. You know, repenting. Repenting of your self-righteousness, okay? <laughs> Kept you keeping it on your toes. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> but see, verse 8 is talking about how God is not bound by our time. That a thousand years is like a day and a day like a thousand years. Why? Because he wants all people to come to repentance. And he's long-suffering. Okay? That's what that is talking about, dear friend. That's what that's talking about. Okay? That has nothing to do with an actual day. That's telling you that God does not live in our, is not bound by our sense of time. Okay? Okay? That's what that's talking about. So ipso facto, what if, no. Okay? But go to 1 Thessalonians. This, this was, you know, Captain. Some of these right here that we're going to be looking at at the close of this are like blip, Captain Obvious kind of stuff, okay? <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We want verses 4 on to verse 9. Verse 5 again in Genesis chapter 1. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And he creates the light and the darkness, okay? How do, how do you think we derived at the term, it's daytime, it's nighttime? From, you know, therefore you're, you're without excuse. Because the invisible things of God are clearly seen. Okay? How do you, where do you derive the term day and night from? From God. It's seen. Okay? And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 and verse 9. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness, nor of darkness. Okay? Nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, the time we check was trouble, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. And what did we look at already? In, uh, oh, we haven't looked at it already, okay. Go to John chapter 3 again, okay. John chapter 3. Not Esther, where, where are you going? John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Seem to have forgotten this one, brother. Wasn't in my notes. Hmm. John chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21. Okay? And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, the truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Granted, these are not capital L, light, but he is the light, okay? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. See, a lot of these people who are atheists or evolutionists, when you start talking to them, it's not that they don't want to believe in God. It's just they don't want to believe in the God who is of the scriptures. They are more well ready and well able and wanting to believe the God of Christianity. Who loves unconditionally. Who judges nobody. Who has no requirements. But see, the God of the scriptures, they don't like him. Because if he had not spoken against their sin, they then they would have no, you know. He spoke against sin. If he had not spoken, they would they would have a cover for their sin. But since he spoke on it, they have no cloak for their sin. See? 
That's why we who are saved of the church of the living God, we love the light. And the light is shown through the scriptures. Okay? But now, now let's get to let's get to the, the big daddy, so to say. Okay? Okay? Verse 5. And God called the light day, and we are of the day, and the darkness he called night. They the lost, they are of darkness. Okay? The evening and the morning were the first day. But what is a day? What is a day? A day is a thousand? No. You want to see what a day is? Okay. Uh, go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. <laughs> John chapter 11. <laughs> Verses 9 and 10. <laughs> Ah, uh, John chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. I, Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in a day? No, no. Okay. So if there are 12 hours in a day, and then there's night, a day, there's 12 hours in the day. How many hours are there in a night? Hmm? Well, it says day, Brad. A day, it says, and, <laughs> okay. <laughs> These people who, who argue this, okay. And the evening, night, and the morning, day, were the first day, okay. So, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. So, okay. Okay. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So if there are 12 hours in the morning, in the day, how many hours are there in the night? C c come on, even you diehard atheist fools, there are 12 hours. A day is 24 hours. Scripture, when it says the first day, okay, uh, uh, the, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 12 and 12 is what? 24. Okay. You know, like 2 plus 2 equals 4, not 36. Okay. So, first day was 24 hours. A day is 24 hours. Okay. Not a thousand years. Not a gap for millions of years. No nonsense like that. No. A day is evening and morning, 12 hours and 12 hours, 24 hours. Okay? That's a day. In six days, God created the heaven and the earth. And he rested the seventh day. Okay? So a day is a literal 24-hour period, dear friend. Okay? And, and notice here in John chapter 11, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 on to verse 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full shall be full of light. If thine eye be single, looking upon the Lord Jesus Christ, looking upon God, okay. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness, not looking towards Jesus Christ, okay. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, the light that is in thee be darkness. Oh, and Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He is the son of the morning. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 under verse 15, okay? We've gone over that plenty of times enough. You ought to know that by now. If you don't, 
Look up Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15, okay? Okay? But Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Okay? But if the, thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And Luke chapter 11 on this, okay? Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verses 33 on to verse 36. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they might that they which come in may see the light. Okay? The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not Darkness. Are you saved? Are you sure? <laughs> if the whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Meaning, for us today, if you are saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, God lives within you. And you are to work out your salvation. Work out, not to save yourself, to stay saved, no, but to work out what God has put in himself, to live as an ambassador for Christ. Okay? And because remember, too, uh, the, uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, <laughs> yeah, brother, this was... Um, this was something too this morning along with the proverb was something that the Lord is like, ah, I want you to talk on that. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 2 verse 14. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Okay? <laughs> but the fool walketh in darkness and the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And keeping in mind, dear friend, and I myself also perceive that one event happeneth to them all. Yes. We're all going to die. Where are you going to go when you die? Are you a fool and believing in reincarnation or some nonsense like that? Or you're just going to be wormwood or, or worm food or something? Or soul annihilationism like Mr. Bullinger taught? One event happeneth to us all. We're all going to die. Where are you going to go? Hmm? Where are you going to go, dear friend? Where are you going to go? And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Romans chapter 13. And we will close with this. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 on to verse 14. And that, knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, get a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy want come as one that travaileth, or traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Meaning that all of a sudden, things are going to come upon you. All of a sudden. Because why? You're asleep. And, and that knowing that the time. And that knowing the time. That now is the high time. To awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer. Than when we believe. Amen. And our salvation nearer than we when we believe. Meaning. The resurrection. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Because those who will do, you know, who will have their deeds manifest that they are wrought in God cometh to the light. Okay? 
Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wanton, wantonness, not in strife and envying. Works of the flesh. Those who are of the flesh want to hide their works from the light, so they revel in darkness. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. There is the Godhead. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening twelve hours, and the morning twelve hours were the first day. You, you got to go to the Hebrew. You got to, uh, the book of Enoch. Okay, the, 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 like I said to you, the book of Enoch is interesting and entertaining, amusing. It's not scripture. Okay, it's not scripture. Okay, but they go to the scholars. They go to the oldest, the best. They go to the Hebrew. There's no space in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 for any gap that provides for millions and billions and trillions of years. Well, what about before verse 1? All you and I need to know is, this is the account in verse 1 about the creation of the earth. That's all we need to worry about. What happened before that? It's not our problem. It's not, it's not our problem. We're talking about where we are today and what we have today. Okay? Okay? And there is no... There is no anything about a world that was before our own before Genesis chapter 1 that's when you got these people who want to go to the Hebrew to try to like that that fool from Shepherd's Chapel okay <laughs> and some of these other people <laughs> okay go into the Hebrew and the book of Enoch okay brethren people the gap theory is just theory and scripturally it does not hold any water okay it's nonsense you're calling God a liar you are not believing the record that God gave of his son and who is God our Lord Jesus Christ who is our father so if you want to go ahead and believe that there's a gap theory or something, or if you want to believe that the earth is millions and billions of years old and trillions of years old, then that's your fault and problem. The scriptures teach nothing like that. It's actually very plain. So that is going to be it for this video. Uh, I, I hope this has helped some of you. Uh, I really do. Uh, glory to the Lord. Uh, may he be glorified and magnified through this. Um, and sorry that this took so long to put this out, but, uh, you know, this was just, um, took our time with this. And uh, like I said, this was a collaborated effort and uh, more videos are on the way, of course, of course, because if this work or counsel be of men, it will come to naught. But if it, uh, uh, but if it is of God, thou canst not overthrow it. You know, YouTube, every four days, YouTube will take away from a recently uploaded video. Every four days, YouTube will remove at least 200 views from any video. Okay, And when they do that, they also remove views from other videos, apparently. But here's something that they've started doing recently. Now, not even within 24 hours or two days, now they will be removing before 24 hours or even uh, 48 hours, 200 views. Okay, I was notified of that, that uh, like the last video uh, before this one, uh, before 24 hours was up, 
it was at like 300 views and then it went down to like 100 or something. Okay, I was notified of that. Somebody, uh, one of you told me about that. It's like, wow, really? And I've noticed that myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's something when, uh, when you're uh, using a platform, you're at the dictate of those who run the platform. But yet, see, the video, the views go away, but yet they, they come back. It's, it's like, why can't you just leave them alone? I don't, I don't understand that. And it makes me wonder, how many views would there be if you did, YouTube didn't remove 200 of them every four days? And now, even before a day has gone by. Wow. Wow. Don't think YouTube likes me very much. <laughs> uh, glory to God. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, brethren. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. We pray for so many of you. Pray for one another. Talk with one another, brethren. Converse with one another. Okay? There, those of you, uh, select uh, of you, you have each other's emails. Don't be strangers one to another. Okay? Talk with one another. Converse with one another. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Okay? Don't just have one to be the go-to for everybody. Speak amongst yourselves. Okay? Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified, be glorified. And we will see you next video whenever that will be hopefully uh, another one this week of course so